Stop me if you've heard this one before. A midnight ride, 40 miles, through a driving rainstorm. If you guessed Sybil Ludington, you'd be correct. So, no, apparently I'm cornering the market on these midnight rides. So, let's bring the past into the present with Sybil Ludington. There are many figures who contribute to history. Most are overlooked, some command the spotlight, and some are simply forgotten. American history is no exception with heroes, traitors, villains, and simply those who were in the right spot at the right time. But all these figures, good or bad, would contribute to this story, our story. This is Forgotten Figures. Sybil was born on April 5, 1760, in Fredericksburg, New York, and was the oldest of 12 children. Not much is really known about her youth until she was 16, and that is where our story begins. In 1777, the local militias had stepped away from the war effort to tend to their farms. That is when Colonel Ludington received word that the British were planning to march on Danbury, Connecticut. It was a supply depot for the Continental Army, and as with Lexington and Concord, a target. Colonel Ludington's instructions to his daughter were clear. Ride to the men, tell them to be at this house by daybreak. The only problem was that it was already 9 p.m., and like all good stories, it was a torrential downpour. Sybil answered her father's call, mounted her horse named Star, and rode into the night. She rode from her family's farm in Kent, south to Carmel, then to Mahopec, then west to Mahopec Falls, north to Kent Cliffs, and Farmer's Mills, then to Stormville, before returning south to her farm, a total distance of 40 miles. How did she awaken the militia, you ask? Similar to Paul Revere, she went around yelling, the British were coming, only in this instance, the British are burning Danbury, as well as using a big stick to bang against houses. Roughly 400 militiamen were making their way to Colonel Ludington by the time Sybil returned home. Unfortunately, Danbury would not be saved. 19 houses and 22 barns and stores would be destroyed. Probably a reason why Sybil Ludington is a forgotten figure. However, the 400 men of the 7th Regiment would go on to assist Benedict Arnold. There he is again, in a Continental Army at the Battle of Ridgefield. The American forces would be successful and drive Royal Governor of New York and British General William Tryon back to the ocean in the British ships in Long Island Sound. Sybil would be personally thanked for her efforts by General George Washington. She would die in 1839, however, at the age of 77, and her ride seemingly would die with her. Her story would just be passed down through the family through time, until 1907, when her great-nephew Louis S. Patrick would recount the tale and draw interest in her heroic feats. In 1935, New York State would erect historic markers along the route that she traveled, and in 1961, a statue was erected of her in Carmel, New York, by Anna Hyatt Huntington. In 1975, her likeness would be placed on a stamp for America's Bicentennial. And since April 1979, a Sybil Ludington 50K has been run along the path of her ride to commemorate her. I think it's safe to say that Sybil Ludington is the definition of a forgotten figure, and unfortunately so. Her ride rivals that of Paul Revere, and in fact she is known as the female Revere. I think the biggest reason she's forgotten is just because the British were still successful at Danbury. They were repulsed the next day, but it's an interesting what if of had she not been able to rally the militia. What's more is who knows how many stories like this exist. In the end, she deserves to be remembered with her counterparts, and the 50k is a testament to that. If you have any local figures like this, share below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe, as well as follow me on Twitter at Past and Present 4. Thanks for watching.